Oh, hi, college food budget. Right, let's just get back in the hole. That static is getting... yeah. I think, thankfully, it shuts up after a while. So yeah, for those who think the water prison seems a bit familiar, like they've read about it before, we have actually, back in Silent Hill 3. There was an optional magazine article that you could read, written by one Joseph Schreiber, in which he wrote about both the Wish House and this very prison. He called it a cylindrical building in the middle of a lake that seemed to have something to do with the cult's teachings or something, and, well, here we are. It gets to the point where the previous Silent Hill references, very obtuse ones at that, they start to feel like they're encroaching a bit. Not too bad yet. It starts getting that way a little later on. You start getting bombarded with it. But for coming up with some of these settings, I can't fault it. This is actually a fairly interesting world, I'll admit that much. Tedious, but interesting. So then, we've got three holes marked on the map here. Now, where they're marked, there's no sense letting it drop us into a room we've already been in. So if we follow where the three holes are, the two uppermost holes lead to rooms that we could get into on the first floor. That lower one does not. So, that's where we want to go. Right in here. Huh, Silent Hill 2, anyone? Shades of James? It's a hole. Jump in. Now, with a gung-ho leap like that, one has to wonder how he's doing this mid-air curve so he doesn't just fall directly down the rest of the holes. It's only a game. It's only a game. Yeah, the lock is just completely broken, so there's nothing you can do, aside from continuing the trip down, into uncharted territory. And we've got more twin victims to deal with. Try and fight them a little more successfully here. Just go with the rapid attacks rather than bothering with the power. Oh, hi there! Look, wait your turn! Or get to where I can hit you both at the same time. That works too. Stomp your friend and I'll be back with you in a moment. Oh, see, I didn't get to stomp him. Wait your turn! This does seem to be going better than trying for all the power attacks. The power attacks are satisfying, but a bit more dangerous. Leaves you open a bit long. You do have invincibility frames during power attacks, so that much is nice. We've unlocked a door. And where exactly are we? We're in the basement. We just came out of the shower room. We need to go up here. Oh, we've got a note on the desk here. There's a document here. It's not sloppily written. This place continues to deteriorate. The doors to a number of cells no longer open. As a result, the kids inside can no longer go outside. But the less they know about that, the better. I can't open the doors, but from this room I can watch them get more and more emaciated each day. With no food and never showering themselves, they turn into smelly little gray lumps in there. Following the suggestion of an engineer, we've disposed of the corpses by digging a hole below the cells. Since each floor of this building can be rotated independently, we can dispose of the bodies without the others noticing by aligning each cell with a body in it vertically. P.S. 
Chief, I bet you're just dying to see the interrogation room behind the kitchen. I understand your feelings, but have you noticed? There are three rooms with bloody beds. One is on the first floor, one is on the second floor, and one is on the third floor. If you line those three rooms up, then it's bingo. So, using these peepholes, we can find where the bloody bed on the first floor is. Nope. Nope. Get me out. Hey there, dude. Get me the hell out of here. We can see you. Nope. Not here. That's the noose room. Hi there. It's always the last place you look. So if we check the map, we need this one. North by northeast, I believe. So we need to align the other two floors. You can't spin the first floor. There's a document here. To keep a close eye on the kids, it's important to keep the cells well lit. The lights on the third floor were originally bought as searchlights. As a precaution against a blackout, they were set up to run on a private generator. There's a hydroelectric generator in the basement. To light up the first and second floors, use the corpse disposal chutes. Since each floor of this building can be rotated, you can light up any of the cells by matching up the holes. Repeating this periodically is an effective way to keep the kids fearful and well-behaved. P.S. Chief, if you turn the handle in the middle of this room, you can easily rotate the cells. You can't rotate the first floor, so align the second and third floors with the first floor cell that has the blood-stained bed. By the way, if you use the peephole in this room, it's easy to make sure you're doing it right. Give it a try. Also, please don't forget to open the sluice gate on the roof. Much appreciated, Chief. Okay. So, let's find another bloody bed. Nope. Yeah, this is what I mean by this area being pretty tedious. Eh, it's a hole, but not a bloody bed. Nope. Nope. There's the wheel we can turn. And there's the bloody bed. Its position is exactly the opposite of where we need, so we can turn the wheel four times in either direction. Let's go with left. Thankfully, we can skip this little cutscene, because we really don't need to see it two more times. And that's just for this floor. So, this floor should be lined up. Let's get to the right area. Should be this one. Yes. Looking through the peephole. There's the bloody bed. So we have it aligned properly. Up to the third floor. And we have another note. It's some kind of memo. The secret number for getting through the door and back of the kitchen this month is 0302. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, before we actually properly align this particular floor, something else I need to do first. Let's see here. Okay, there's already a hole in the place I need one. Basically, the one that's north by northwest. Or, west by northwest, actually. At least I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm no navigator. You've seen me play Secret of Mana. There's something quite important I want to go pick up.
And for that, I'll need to go up to the third floor again. Look at it this way, Henry. All this ladder climbing, you've got like the ultimate workout going. This is the ultimate home gym. Right through a hole in your bathroom. How convenient. <laughs> Okay. So this should be the one I want. Yes. Okay. Specifically, I want to fall in this room since you have to actually drop into it. It's locked from the outside. And so we get a stun gun. Yes, please. High voltage stun device. Fairly short range due to its need for direct contact. But oh, does it come in handy. Yeah. There aren't really any other monsters for us to deal with in this particular world. We're almost done with it, actually. But ooh, in the next one, I wouldn't want to be without that thing. You will see much use of the stun gun. It is beautiful. Okay, so back to what we're actually supposed to be doing. Gods, the, the the tedium in this world, though, I swear. The first time I went looking for that stun gun, ah, uh, ho, ho. Trying to find the right hole to go down for it, because it's so tiny you can't really see it from any of the peepholes. So you can't really get a sense of where you're supposed to be going from there. Yeah. Okay, so. We actually saw where the bloody bed is. It was the room we were just in. So we need to turn this floor to the right twice. Now turn to the right. Now turn to the right. Oh, hey, we somehow opened the door. We got you the out of there. So with that, we should be completely lined up. No, I don't want to turn it again. Thank you, no. This the right one? Yes. Should be the bloody bed right here. And there it is. We're good to go. Go down. Down again.